uh, been following the life of Abraham, amen, and we found last week, amen, as we continue in the life of Abraham, Genesis chapter 15, amen, and uh, he rose his right hand and swore to God, amen, that he would not take anything from the king of Sodom and all that was required of them, amen. And God, amen, was blessed him by sending him Shem, amen, the Melchizedek, which we could talk a little bit about that, means, amen, king of righteousness. And uh, so God blessed him, amen, sent him his, his leader, amen, and, and, and continued on. And right after this, amen, we're going to read chapter 15. Say amen if you're following me. Amen. amen. It said, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram. And in the vision saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. And Abram said to the Lord God, what you have given me seen, I go childless. And my heir in my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Look, Lord, you have given me no offspring, and no, indeed, uh, one born in my house, my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This is the this is what should not be your heir, but one who was one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. He'll bring, and then he'll be brought up. Him, Amen. Outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars. And if you're able to number them, and he said to me, it shall be your descendants be. Let's stop right there. Father, we come before you. Lord, I just pray for your Holy Spirit this evening, Lord God, this time of teaching, Lord God. We bring direction in our lives, Lord God, as we cover the life of Abraham and Sarah, Lord God. Father, we just ask you to move in our service this morning, Lord God, and we lift up our spirits. We thank you and glorify you in Jesus' name. And everybody amen. says. Amen. And the Bible says, amen, and he believed the Lord, and he was accounted to him for righteousness. You know, when we be, have to be careful what we call a blessing. Are you here today? Many of us want to be blessed. That is the ultimate goal in life, amen, to prosper. And God wants to prosper your life, amen, as we... Uh, giving in our tithes and our offerings, amen, many times we come, amen, and God wants to show us some things, and he blesses us, can you get an amen, and, but we have to be careful about your blessings, because each and every one of these blessings doesn't come without you paying a price, I've always been taught, and I remember my pastor always teaching me these things, amen, before you can get blessed, you have to be a blesser. In other words, you have to help somebody to be blessed. Amen? And the Bible teaches us it's a blessing to give than to receive. Are you here today? And so when God says to you, he says to him, amen, I will bless those, amen, who will bless you. And the blessings that are uh, comes, amen, and there's a waiting period. Anything that God does with our lives, Something that you and I do not like. I was reading the other day, and I remember uh, <clears throat> I was listening to this one rabbi. He says, those, amen, who are impatient can't wait for God. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And those who are impatient, impatient cannot teach. That did something to me. Can I get an amen? Yeah. He teaches us to be patient. Yeah. I don't pray for it. I don't want it. But you have to develop patience. Because the Bible teaches us, amen, that patience, amen, develops perseverance. And perseverance, amen, comes with long suffering and so on. Because we're going to learn a few things. Remember, this is not just about Abram, but this is about Abram and Sari. Amen. Sarah, as you know her, amen. And so... When God calls, amen, there is a waiting time for the blessing. And God understands these things more than we do. Abram, amen, there was a few challenges of his life. Amen, he was called in chapter 12. Amen, there is a promise made. When God makes us a promise, amen, we're always about, when am I going to get my promise fulfilled? Are you here today? 
There's always a wait time. God knows these and understands these things, amen? And as I said, amen, once again, how much do we get in the way of God? How many times do we get in the way of God? We want to manufacture our own blessings. We want to do our own things, amen? I remember a brother in the home, we used to call him, brother, brother bless me. Every time he would see somebody with a nice shirt, would say, man, that would look good on me. Man, I would really like that. And he would be there for a while before the brother said, you want this? You want to bless me with it? Thank you. Can I get an amen? You want to manufacture your own blessings at time, amen, and say, look how blessed I am. I remember we had a brother, amen, who got shipped out from Las Cruces and flew to the men's home. Amen. And he wrote a letter, amen. And uh, while well, he opened up his bag, and he says, oh, look, I found the letter. And he opened it up, and he says, look it, read it. And it's, it's, it's uh, his wife saying, baby, I love you, and I can't wait till you get back. I know that you're the greatest man in the world, amen, and all these things. And he got a letter. From, I said, well, that's a cool letter, this and that. But I found out later that he wrote it. Can I get an amen? Hello. Many people think highly of themselves. But what is God doing, amen, because we get in the way. And we're going to learn about what God is doing in our lives. And God moves in a certain time, in a certain season. When God, amen, establishes Abraham's call, it's in the month of Passover. When God makes another promise, amen, that we see in chapter 13, amen, that he shows him the stars and the moon and the sands, amen, and he says, Here's, I'm going to multiply your blessing. This is how your people are going to be. You can't see it, Abraham, and your wife can't see it, but God can see it. Can I get an amen? There's often times, amen, that God makes promises to us. moment we do not see. Amen. Oftentimes, I've seen many, many pastors get launched out to come back, amen, all defeated. Because they're not giving their time to the Lord. There's a process of time, amen, where you go through a famine like Abraham did. So then Abraham begins to experience, amen, what God does in a time of adversity. You receive a promise, you react, you go, and then you get there and nothing happens in your life. It becomes dry, it becomes stale. You have to put trust in the Lord. Are you here today? These are the things that are very very hard to do. When God comes to Abraham again, it's during the month of first fruits. In the third month, amen, Yahweh came to Abraham in a dream. And he said, fear not, Abraham, for I am your shield. Are you here today? Your reward is exceedingly great. This is what we got, Genesis chapter 15. He says, after the word of the Lord came to him, he said, in a vision, amen, this means, amen, that he was asleep and God spoke to him. God begins to speak to us in different and various ways. He has to get our attention, amen, because during the day, as I said before, our minds are going. We are occupied by life. Are you here today? And we go through things in our own personal lives, amen. We're not focused on God. This is what takes patience, amen. It takes understanding, amen, to try to get the, know, the Lord, to know the Lord, amen, because he's every day he's trying to show, show you something new. Can I get an amen? amen? And after these things, amen, here he, got, he speaks to him in a bit, and when he begins to start to trust God, that when, that's when faith builds. Amen. Are you here today? Amen. When you begin to trust God, and the things you can't see, that's when your faith is being built. When he, You know, the Bible says that he believed God and he was counted righteousness. Can I get an amen? The word account means amen. If you look it up, amen, it means to establish. Are you here today? It means amen. It has various meanings, amen, today. Amen, as we look, amen, that he it counted him righteousness, amen. 
What God is trying to do is establish your life, amen, where you can trust him. You know every word that's given from God is sure and it's an amen. Can I get an amen this morning? No matter what God does, says in our lives, we have to hold to those promises. Sometimes, amen, he begins to build our character, amen. Has to remove some things out of the way in our lives, amen, so we can trust in him. See, because we see problems, amen, and we don't understand. We want people to think the way we think, amen. We want them to understand the way we understand. So it gets frustrating, amen, because they're rebellious. They don't want to get it. But how long did it take you to get saved? How long did it take you to understand? How long did it take you, amen, to get to the place where you're at? this morning amen so you have to understand that you can complain you can get mad you can say all kinds of things God is still developing some patience in you are you here today and when those things come in your life amen no one likes it because we want everything to be easy but nothing came easy to Abram one thing that I notice here about this young man that he begins to the Lord and he begins to develop a relationship with him. That when God re when God does respond to him, because every day is an act of righteousness. That means that God pulled him aside and said, I don't want you to be a part of the world. Stay away from these people. You can say hi, you can say hello, but don't get involved with them. Are you here? I want you to be safe so I can bless you. Amen. I can do things with you. Amen. But you have to learn how to count on me. And this is what God was doing with his life. Say amen if you're here. So he enjoyed his special relationship. But we learn, amen, that he's not exempt, amen, from circumstances of life. He's not exempt with his problems, amen, with his nephew. And we experience that. I may remember that. We got to see the, the troubles of this family problems. We all got family problems. Got to get an amen. amen. We all have children. Jesus had, when Jesus spoke about a young man, amen, or a father, amen, he had two sons, amen. One was obedient and one didn't want to listen. He goes to the first son, amen. He says, I need you to go work, work out in the field today, amen. The son says, sure, I'll go out there. And he never does. And then he goes to the outspoken, rebellious one. Amen. Hey, I want you to go out there. No, I don't want to go out there. But guess what he does? He goes out there and Jesus says, who is the blessed one? It's kind of like Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau, amen. One, Jacob, Jacob was more to his mother. And Esau was more, amen, with his father. Esau was a gamer. Esau was out there hunting, amen. Playing games, but Esau also liked the women. Are you here? His dad said, don't go play with those women, and he still went and played with them. Don't go do this, and he still went and do it, amen. But Jacob, amen, was more with his mom. His mom would share things about the things of God, as well as Isaac would share the things of God. Are you here today? And so God understands family problems. He understands the issues of life that we go through. And every man of God is no exception. We're not exempt from problems in the home. Yeah. We're not exempt, amen, to say, you know what, I'm going to be discouraged this morning, amen. We have to learn how to get out of those things. Yeah. We have to learn how not to complain, amen. We have to learn how to have faith. And when, uh, when the world is going one way, we go the opposite way. We don't go with everybody else. We have to trust God. Amen. Do we make mistakes? Abram shows us that men of God make mistakes. Amen. That shows us, amen, that circumstances of life, amen, no matter how many times you're in a storm, no matter how many times the wind blows a certain way, amen, but we know that we're going to get up, amen, and when your flesh starts to get scared or starts to panic, amen, we turn to the Lord immediately, right. and we trust in Him. Are you here this morning? You see, you're not immune, amen, to common problems. It's your reaction. Your common problems, amen, is the enemy wants to put fear. People want to make you panic. People want to do things, amen. A righteous man is Abram, amen. The Bible teaches us a man in integrity does not panic. A man and woman of God, amen, don't look at a situation, amen. They look to prayer. They turn to God. Amen. They understand the how God begins to work in your life. Amen. But we see the lie. Abraham was 75. Amen. When he was called by God. 
where the first 30, uh, 50 plus years of his life, God was building him, and then comes the call. And then when he's 75 years old, he leaves. And then when he's 80, 85 years old, God begins to speak to his life again. How many hear me today? Amen. And when God does those things, amen, he, may, he begins to speak to him. Is that who are you going to trust? He says, our trials are today are no different. Your trials are no different. It's how do you respond? You know, women, with all due respect, you can panic. And it will happen to you. You can panic, amen, and take that to your man. But man, how do we respond to these things? How do we respond to panic? You know, it doesn't matter, amen, what is said. It's how you trust God. If you're going to trust God, amen, like Abraham's life, he trusted God. But our mistakes were made, and we're going to get into that. How many want to get into this morning? Oh, you're going to be surprised at a few things. Are you here? Because when the Bible says, in Abraham, amen, God counted him righteous. And the Lord, amen, who had, had, brought, his, had brought you down. Remember, God's always bringing his people out. Always bringing out. Know, we were in the world. We were lost in the world. Drugs and everything else in life, amen. And God brought us out of that. Amen. He was a Chaldean, amen, and around with a bunch of idols, and God brought him out of that. He tells God, see, God has to make us out in the world. He has to do certain things, you know, and the word Egypt, as I said before, means, amen, pressing together. What the world does to us, it puts pressure on you. You look at your jobs and how much you know, the more you're faithful, the more you do, and the more you're a go-getter, the more pressure it comes with those things. Yeah. The ones, amen, who don't care and sleep on the job and find a little corner, amen. That's what I used to do, amen. I go find somewhere to sleep. I eat here. I go, oh, but nobody's looking, so I'm going to hide behind these boxes over here. I'm going to take a little 15-minute nap. Hello. <laughs> but when you find yourself, amen, on the go and wanting to pursue life. Their goals come important. I want to be somebody. I don't want to be, you know, I want to be an owner. I don't want to work all my life. And then the pressures of life come. Pressures at work. Pressures at home. Pressures that God is in the process of molding the righteousness of his life to see if you're going to trust him or trust the world. Amen. You know, when God turns around, amen, I love this part. Amen. Verse 12, he says, And when the sun was going down, amen, and a deep sleep was upon Abram, and then, uh, 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 behold, he says, A horror of great darkness fell upon him. And then he had said to Abram, he says, Know certainly that your descendants, amen, will be a stranger in the land. This is what he's talking about. Are you here today? But what happens, amen, that God begins to make a promise to him. And remember what I said, what God does. God raises his right hand. You see, Middle East tradition taught this, amen. I think I taught this before, but I'll bring it up again. Somebody say that's okay to do that. Can I get an amen? Amen. Because what they did is they got animals, amen, as to make a binding contract, a sacrifice. Amen. And they got the animals, amen. In this case, God told them how to get certain animals, put the blood down the middle, and put the carcasses on the side, amen? And what they would do, one would get on the other end, and the other person would get on the other end. And they would both raise their right hands, amen, together, and say, if we break this contract, let the, let our, let this, what happened to these animals, happen to us. Can I get an amen? Oh, yeah. And so God understood this. Abraham had to understand this. I mean, you're following me so far. Because when God raises his right hand to him, God means what he's going to fulfill. And you and I make a promise to him should be as faithful to God as he is faithful to us. I remember years ago, amen, being in a men's home, I had no idea what was going on in my life. I know that God was building me. I was there for a while. Got serious about serving the Lord. Wanted to be a disciple, became a disciple, amen. But I remember being back there, and I, I raised my right hand to God. Nobody was there, just me. Amen. And I said, Lord, I swear to you, I promise you, Lord God, 
before anything in the world that I will never turn my back. I will serve you to the end. I don't want to be a part of the world. I want to be a part of your kingdom. Amen. I promise, amen, to give it all I got to serve you, never to be a drug addict again, never to do alcohol, never to smoke a cigarette, amen, to be holy, amen, before you, the best of my ability, I promise, and God did too, 20 some years later, still doing it, are you here today? 20 years later, man, having picked up a cigarette, having smoked, amen, having drank, amen, yet put no needles in my arm, put no pipe in my mouth, are you here today? But I know how those things were in my life, amen, I know what it done to me, amen, so Jesus Christ, amen, can set you free because he fulfills those promises of your life. When you raise your right hand, it really means something. It means that you're going to be faithful. It means that you're going to apply those things into your life, amen. And God begins to build you when you get serious about serving him. I'm going to say amen. So it's no, no, it's no different because God looks to the future. God looks to the future. Think about this for a second. It was 20-some years ago, 1997, amen, I got saved. Amen. In 1999, uh, 1998, amen, made a promise to the Lord. You think about the, you think about those times, amen, of the fulfillment of God, amen, what he did for Abraham. What can he do for you? He can do the same for you when you are serious and he will count you faithful. Can I get an Amen. Because one thing that we have to understand, an oath, amen, it means, amen, it's binding and unchangeable. Are you here today? God makes a promise and it's sealed. It's the work that he does in our lives, amen, when we begin to mess things up. How many know we get in the way? Say it with me, I get in the way. You see, because an oath to God is the most serious thing. When God says, I swear, when God swears, it is a long-lasting objective. God's course is unchangeable, amen, and it means what he said. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37, amen, this is what Christ says. Let your yeses be yes, and your noes be noes. For whatever is more least than that comes from the evil one. In other words, don't put more on it, amen. Your answer should be straight. You don't have to defend yourself. God is your defender. Amen. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Hello? These are the things, amen, that God begins to show us. And when Abraham woke up, amen, he began to see, amen, the torches, blindness. This is God. God begins to move through. And let me tell you something. It is like the Passover. Can I get an amen? When God begins to move through, it means that God is going to fulfill that contract in his life. Can I get an amen? This is exactly like the days of Pentecost. Amen. It has double meaning on this because it's the spirit of God that came down. Are you here today? It's the spirit of God that begins to go through. Amen. It touches his life. Amen. Puts a new tongue on his life. Amen. And he starts speaking in tongues. Can I get an amen? This is the fulfillment of God's word in his heart. This is just like the, the days of Pentecost, amen, when the fire, amen, starts to light up and the spirit gets to go, get going. Are you here today? This is why the Bible teaches these things, amen. If you don't see it, you're missing it. Can I get an amen? Because it should be right in front of you. Because why? Your Bible should be right in front of you. Can I get an amen? But when you read these things, amen, God begins to show us, and the only way one person breaks a promise, and it ain't going to be God, Amen. it's going to be us. But God is a forgiving Lord, and he makes a way of escape for us. Are you here? Malachi chapter 3, let me share this, share this with you. Verse 6 says, I the Lord do not change. I the Lord, and I do not change. It's not a proudful thing. It is God. Justice and righteousness as a foundation of his throne. Righteous act. God, God does righteousness by his people today. And God keeps, we see it in the nation of Israel. How God's fulfilling the destiny and promise of Israel. Can I get an amen? And see, because this is what, what it means in Hebrews. I am, I'll always be, 
and I'm still here. Can I get an amen? This is the biggest problem what the church world has today. The big, the big problem what church people have today is we don't believe. If you want to believe, you're counted as righteousness. Are you here? And the righteousness and the right acts of God. You see, people, amen, have a problem today, amen, because people love God, but people don't believe that God loves them. But people have to understand God loves them more than they really love the Lord. Can I get an amen? Because when we think about love, what does the Bible teach us about love? Love is sacrifice. Love is not rude. Love is not this. Love is not that. It doesn't envy. It's not jealous. Are you here today? It doesn't hate. It doesn't have all these things. Amen. All those things that who we used to be. And those things can still creep up in our heart. And, and we can walk in hypocrisy. Are you here today? Some of us want to react all the time. Amen. And get mad and have a fit. Amen. And throw hands, whatever the case may be. Amen. Think about, amen, what it means to be a child. Why Paul says, when I was a child, I acted like a child. I didn't even reason like a child. Amen. I, I stomped my feet. I got mad. I broke things. I did this. I did that. Amen. The foolish things that children do. Amen. I want to fight you. I want to call you out. It's three o'clock. Let's go meet after school. Are you here today? The Think of how I remember that. Yeah. I think the after school special. You guys ever heard the after school special? Oh, remember that? See, they don't get that. That was 1970s. We're talking to millennial people in here. Hello. Right? The after school special. They made an after school special about fighting after 3 o'clock. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because why? Every fight was after school yeah. <laughs> at 3 o'clock. Okay? Yeah. By 3.15 or 3.10 or 3.05, someone's getting knocked out. Are you here? And that's the holy truth. Amen. Okay? <laughs> but some of the things that Paul points out in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 13, I believe it is, I act like a child, I reason like a child. And then he comes to the realization, amen, you know what? I did all those things, right? Yeah. This is Pastor Joe's paraphrase. Amen. All those things I put away, all those childhood things, I don't do no more. Yeah. I don't act like this no more. Yes, my flesh wants to rise up. Yes, our flesh does that. And people are good to point out, amen, how hypocrite you are. You know what? I can be. So let's not put no salt on anything or any wounds, amen. Yes, I can be. Amen. And those who like to point fingers, amen, are faking too. Are you here? So we're even. Praise the Lord. And I, everybody says, amen. amen. And so let's go on, amen. So the Bible teaches us, amen, about the covenant that God makes. And when God walks through, amen, he makes a covenant. This same covenant he made with the righteous of Noah. You see, one thing that the Bible doesn't, it shares in there, if you really read about it, they were already laws laid out, amen, from Noah to Shem and from Shem to, to Abram. Not to kill, not to defraud your neighbor. Are you here? Just the simple Ten Commandments before they were even in the Ten Commandments because God was governing, God was showing how, the, how they were going to be blessed, righteous people, amen. And if we need that, we need to hear what the do's and don'ts and how to live for the Lord. Are you, are you following me so far? And so Abram knew some of these things already. And during this time, Abraham renewed, amen, the festival of Shavuot which means Pentecost, was actually established with him. Can I get an amen? amen? Some of you may not know that, but that's okay. Amen. So he was being blessed at this time. And what does he do? He's so excited after he wakes up. Amen. And he, God tells him, amen, that, you know, what? out of him and, and Sarah, amen, they're going to have a child. Are you here? And that's the whole goal, amen, to go on so they can be the nation of Israel. But God tells him, amen, to stay away from these certain people. And so what does Abram do? He goes, runs home, rejoicing, excited. Come on, amen. I remember, I hear something from the Lord. Alma, Alma, God said something to me. Okay. She just 
looks at she just looks at me, okay. <laughs> no. Almost. Okay, so so he turns around, he gets excited, runs home, wants to go tell his wife the excitement about the promise of God. And Mary and Mary, I'm sorry, you didn't do that. Sarah has a great idea. Come on, ladies. All of you have a great idea. Come on. Abraham rejoiced of all these things, runs home to Sarah, and Sarah believed everything. Why should Sarah doubt him? Why would any woman of God doubt the man of God? God spoke to him, made a promise to him. Are you here today? Run home, and why? Who is this about? This Because Abraham, amen, wasn't going to come out of him. He needed his wife to fulfill his destiny. Are you here? This little couple, amen, were going to set up a trend for the rest of their lives in the covenant of God for the rest of our lives. Amen. Are you here today? This work is not done just by me. It's done by me and Sister Alma. Can I get an amen? We God called not me. God called both of us. Amen. So she is like our pastor. Sister Susie's our pastor's wife. Are you here? She is a pastor. Amen. We have taken the responsibility of leadership. In other words, amen, you know, there comes a line of respect with that. Amen. If you think about Sarah's life and who was she had and all these other time, God was going to deal with both of them. Because how many know when a blessing comes, so does the price. And a lot of people think it's a free thing. It's not. Because animals, and according to the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, God created the animals of the earth, of the world. And God loves animals. God loves animals. Why would he create something without putting his heart into it? If you go back, amen, I believe it was before the fifth day, the fourth day, God created every beast of the field, every type of animal. And God pulled Adam and said, let's name them together. Let us. The Bible says, amen, in Hebrew it's a little different, amen, because he began to walk with God. He began to walk with God, and as they walked, amen, he imagined he allowed Adam. Go ahead, son, you name that animal right there. Can I get an amen? Wouldn't that be a blessing? Walking with the Lord, amen, and he begins to point out every little animal. So it wasn't an easy thing, amen. If God had to make a choice, as he did, amen, do I kill this couple or do I put something in its place? And this is what God did, amen. He rather chose a lamb, amen, amen, to be sacrificed than the ones he truly loves. You see, there are times in your life, amen, when we're going through things as supernatural people that we believe in God, amen, and trust in his Holy Spirit and all the things that God do, amen. But when we make mistakes, amen, God doesn't want to kill us. He says that if you eat of the apple, the sin, amen, you will die, surely die. But he's speaking of spiritual life because he knows the toil. He knows everyone who's outside the realm of God, what they go through, confusion, lie, demonic powers of the earth. Are you here? And that's enough to kill your spirit. When you get involved, amen, to things and try to take the responsibility for yourself, you get involved in things that are unknowing to you. But you think you can handle those things. I can do all things in Christ Jesus that strengthen me. But maybe it's the one thing that God does not want you to do because he knows what spiritually it's going to do to you. Are you here today? And there are things in our lives, amen, that Sarah goes back, amen, and then she begins to uh, do something here. Chapter 16, let's look at this real quick. Now we're going to read about Sarah's right idea. Are you here? I'm going to take a little time on this one. Say amen. amen. Not because I tell you. <laughs> Chapter 16 says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had bore him no children. Okay? Here's a great idea. Ready? Are we ready for the great idea? All right. I want to prepare you. There's a great, I mean, when you lay, I have an idea. Oh, no. Man, 
You see, because we think that God's just working with the man of God. It's up to the man of God to minister to his wife. Are you here? When a man of God, amen, wants to be lived right, amen, how is it so foolish that we can live righteously and a man just gets tailed off? Who becomes the teacher? The woman. That's not the way God ordained it. It's to become one, amen. The man is the head of the wife. And the wife must learn these simple little things on what it means to be righteous. Are you here? So let's, let's go ahead and read this. I'll start getting into another teaching. Amen. And so Sarah and Sari, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. And here's her great idea. And she had an Egyptian maidservant who was named Hagar. So Sari says to Abram, see now the Lord has not, has not, okay, I'm going to start laughing right away. Amen. Have restrained me of man, uh, uh, restrained me from bearing children. Please go to my maid servant. Perhaps, Amen. I have, I shall obtain children by her. Abraham uh, heeded his wife's voice. Sorry, and sorry, Abraham's wife took Hagar, his mid, oh my God, her her mid, uh, Egyptian, Amen, and gave it to her, her husband Abraham, to be his wife. And after Abraham dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, so uh, he went to Hagar and she conceived him. I said, Was that a great idea? No. I can't have babies. I know what God said, but you know what? Let's fulfill it with another woman. Great idea. Are you here? Imagine that. Huh? Come on. You get divorced. I don't want her involved. Why not? God said. <laughs> And we're getting there, brother. So Sarah, <laughs> amen. You see, because God begins to work, amen, even when we make mistakes. The saddest thing, amen, is that, you know, Abraham should have said, no. Let's wait for God. Okay? Sensible thing. But it was his wife, and he adored his wife. He loved his wife. Are you here today? Abraham, amen, one, he may he understood, amen, uh, uh, at the moment, amen, walking with God, amen, can you imagine that? I'm walking with the Lord, maybe he had too much Holy Spirit in him or something, yep. he came back, man, oh, like, okay, maybe it is God, let me go sleep with her now, hello, mm -hmm. and so, when our desires, amen, become something more, a man will say, I'll do anything for you. When women get to the place of panic and all these things, we make mistakes instead of saying, wait for God. Because we see him and, well, you know, can you imagine? Well, I'm not going to have a son. Like God hasn't moved in it. And, you know, and maybe I have a great idea. <laughs> and so as men, amen, we respond, amen, in fear. I like your idea. Maybe that's your great idea. It could be my idea. Or at times, amen, we make the wrong choice. Are you here today? I'll do anything. You see, because there's God's way, and then there's your way. You see, we want to call our way God's way. I'm here following so far. Instead of, of it becomes a, this is a, an emotional decision. This becomes an emotional decision. And then when we take matters in our own hand, it doesn't matter. I will do anything. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever is going to fill your desire, he wanted to do. And this is, wasn't God's desire. I mean, you can say amen. amen. And this is the, when you get into that position, amen. I will do whatever it takes. Now you have a Hagar in your life. Hello. Because the opportunity presented itself, amen. Instead of turning to God, amen, he put it in Sarah's hand. Sarah reacts, amen, with her emotion, amen. And she turns right away. And things begin to unfold after this. Two women. Amen. I don't know how they did it back then. Are you here? 
Craziness. Don't get quiet at me now. Hello. But what happens after some time, Sarah, a man, begins to be jealous of this young lady. There's a sense of hostility from, 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 from Sarah to Hagar. And Hagar turns, amen, hey, this is my man too. Are you here? Man, what you couldn't do, I did. Are you here today? And so she thought she had more favor. Abraham didn't play that. He's like, Shh, get away. And it hurt her feelings. But then all of a sudden, the Bible says, amen, that Sarah reacted wrong. Come on. In her maturity, she stoops her level back down to her. Remember, she's a slave. What does she know about Yahweh? Yeah. Only what she sees in front of her. You know, it's like, you know, guys in the home, when they go out to different places to work or whatever, amen, and, 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 and uh, their bosses or whoever, amen, only see what they comes out of their mouths. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Guys that leave the home, go talk to Abraham, to other <laughs> pastors or whatever. They only hear and see what comes out of their mouths and what's going on in their lives. Right. They don't know me. Yeah. Are you here? And so this is how parents are. Your children describe you, amen. Who well, you know, my mom's mean and my dad was this and my dad that. And you meet and they're like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. You know, what's what the heck? <laughs> are you here? Oh, she's just nice to you. <laughs> Can I get an amen? But he begins to see, she gets to see the hostility. And then, say with me, and then she turns around and takes it out on Abraham. You see what you did? You see what this did you do with it? Abraham's smart. Man, I love his response. So Abraham, there was a verse 6 says, So Abraham said to Sire, Indeed, your maid is in your hands. <laughs> Do to her what you please. That's the, that's the thing between you two, not me. I'm out of it. <laughs> and this is how men respond to these situations. Are you here? When the woman wants to be in charge, it blows up, and the man says, That's your problem. You handle that. Had nothing to do with me. Here. The kids come at me with certain, oh, go to your mom. Go to your mom. Let her handle that. Are you here? Every decision that is made in hostility because the way she was acting towards a man, uh, uh, Sarah was acting towards Hagar, who Hagar doesn't know anything about serving God. And then Abraham's answer was simple that the Lord's judge. I mean, uh, uh, Sarah turns and flips it on him. God's going to judge between you and me. How is that going to happen? That was your choice. <laughs> you're great. You know, come on, ladies. Man, you get mad. Amen, people. Come on. Oh, God said you're going to. And not all of a sudden, thus said the Lord comes out of your mouth. Come on. Well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. Well, you're deciding all these things. Your choice. Because why? When it becomes your fault. Your fault because you want to lead. Hello? Amen. When you want to lead, God doesn't go with you. That's right. amen. You see, when we get into the problems, amen, when we have problems, attitude changes. Yeah. Yeah. So this young lady wasn't, she thought it was going to be, oh, how many know when you see, oh, it's going to be so great. It's mad. This is going to be awesome. How many know when you're taking a trip somewhere, you think, man, this is going to be cool. Man, this, man I'm going to enjoy this drive. We're going to, just, oh my God, you're describing to everybody. We're going to go through the mountains of Ridoso. Man, it's going to be so nice and come back. We're going to make a stop there. And we're going to do this. And we're going to go to the motel. The kids are going to go swimming. And I'm going to have a little long time with me and my girl. And we're going to do, and then you, nothing works out that way. Come on. Nothing works out that way. Arguing and fighting the whole way. Kids screaming in the back. Amen. <laughs> Crying going on. Flat tire. Hot middle of the desert. Wasn't so cool after all, was it? The driver is humid. Come on. Things just don't go 
the way you think they're going to go. Because why? Is God involved in this? God is not involved, amen, if you look to the scriptures, amen, this is what Abraham does. Amen, it's because Sarah, amen, dealt with her harshly. This is what the Bible says. He says this, and Sarah dealt, Sarai, amen, dealt harshly with her and pushed her away and she ran away. She takes off, amen. And how many know this is exactly the description how we act? Hello. I would like to say just women act that way, but men have emotional problems too. Can I get an amen? And so this is exactly what takes place. She didn't like anyone. She didn't, here she, instead of being a teacher, amen, learn teaching her how to serve the Lord, amen, and how you treat one another. Amen? Because there has to be, no matter how grown or how old you may think you can be, amen, you always need a teacher to teach you on the spiritual things. Because you don't know. You don't know what it means to be reverent. Hagar, and there are many Hagars in the world. She didn't understand. This is why Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Likewise, teach the <laughs> older women to be reverent that they may live but teach what is good that they can urge the younger women to love their husbands yeah. are you here <laughs> teach them amen, how to have respect if you can't respect one another women you're never going to respect God yeah. if you don't respect your elders in the Lord amen Spiritually, amen, you will have no respect for the men and women of God of your life. How many of you hear me today? I know you don't want to hear that, but this is the truth. Amen. Hagar had to learn. Hagar learned from Sarah. In the beginning, Sarah taught her these things. Before all this, and you won't find it in the Bible, but you'll find it in the book of Jubilee. Amen. And in the book of Jubilee, it says this, and Sarah taught her, and she was... Not in different, I mean, in defiance, amen, of following. Not, excuse me, not defiant of following her good ways. So in the beginning, like, she's learning, she's teaching how to be reverent, how to be, and then the nasty comes out. You know, because we can think, amen, how can this person call themselves godly and look at the way they act? Yeah. Come on, every one of us have been there at one time. No. Get offended, or get mad, and all these other things. What did he say? Are you here? And so, she, whatever, she got mad because she started treating her um, bad. When she reacted to that issue and problem, instead of Sarah being the adult about it, the spiritually adult about it, because she wasn't, she was just a few years older than her, she, instead of being a man, the grown up Christian, she was not being a grown-up Christian. She reacted and treated, treated her bad. Yeah. Maybe there were some looks going on. <laughs> Grabbing Abraham's arm. Come on, baby. That would make anybody mad. Huh? Making her go wash clothes. Huh? Maybe she's getting mad. Look, I thought, I'm carrying your kid. Come on. You're Imagine, I mean, I just... You know, I'm was pregnant and happy, sad, emotional, cry, all these things. Sarah never experienced those things. So Sarah never had to experience what it is to get up and vomit in the morning and all those morning sickness and all carrying a child. Imagine picking this kid up and you're like walking around with it and she wants you to go, hey, I want you to go pick this up over there. I want me to pick, I'm carrying your kid. Hello? And so the reaction is emotional. Maybe she was having a bad day, amen. But Sarah didn't experience a house of Sarah supposed to know. How many are hearing me today? It's like men trying to figure out, you know, they went in the labor room and said, yeah, that was hard, man. I had a baby with her. <laughs> man, I'm so tired. Oh, my gosh. That was rough. Come on. Uh, you take the blame, high five everybody, doctor, bah, bah, I did a great job, didn't I? I did it. Look at me, look at me. She's all laying right there. All... Come on. Take all the credit. Well, it wasn't for me that she wouldn't be there. 
Hello? Full of emotions, Sarah being jealous, treated her bad. And what is her answer to things? Run away. Are you here? What's the answer when things don't go right in the church? People run away. When they get mad, offended, amen, it doesn't matter what it is. They get up and walk out. Are you here? We should be more concerned. How do, how do I follow up on this? Well, don't ask them what's going on. Are you okay? It should be enough. Yeah. Well, no, pastor said, well, did you ever talk to the pastor? <laughs> Hello? Don't get into the cheese, man. Let me pray for you. Amen. Don't let her be a Hagar. Be a sari, amen. Go out there, follow up, and, and don't take it, amen. We have to get dirty looks and all that and all the nonsense. We take this stuff. <laughs> Immature. <laughs> you don't want to hear me. <laughs> but the Bible says, amen, what does she do? She ran off into the wilderness. And you know what? And Abram and Sarah did nothing. Wow. And they go look for her. They didn't go over there and, and see where she was going on. Listen, look, look what the Bible says. And so she and she fled from the presence. Verse 7 says, but this is, you know, this is the problem with people who don't realize. People, when people run away, me and my wife, amen, we learn. We go through prayer. Yeah. Babe, let's pray for so and so. Are you here? The other day, you know, one of the guys just freaking out. I said, okay, mom, I, I go to a warrior. I said, babe, we need to pray together for this, this person and believe in God. Are you here? Yes. Can I go to one of you and let's pray for so and so without question? Or are you going, why? Why? <laughs> why? Why? What did you hear? What did you hear? <laughs> Hello? Or can it be, yes, pastor, let's pray. <laughs> why do I have to explain? I don't have to explain. It should be, yes, we need to pray. My pastor said, you know, brother, we need to pray. Let's pray. Without question, he'll call me. Brother, please pray for so and so. Okay, Pastor, got it. Hey, why? What did they do? Huh? Huh? All of a sudden, your ear gets all hot. No, I'm getting an amen. amen. But that, when she runs away, hello, Abraham didn't attempt to even deal with the matters, hoping it would just go away. Come on, guys. Just just go away. Get rid of the problem. Come on, let's sweep it under the rug. Huh? Go in there and smile. She might smile back. Is everything okay? Are you good mood today? Hello? Come on! Instead of whining and crying and complaining, that's what, you know, I need to do this. And no, no, no. You need to take it to God. Hello? Stop this nonsense. Matters just don't go away, they get worse. But then God has to intervene. And that's what God does. No matter what it is. Because the promise was this. God said this to Abram. You circumcise these people, these children, amen, that are before you. And you the eighth year, and the eighth day you should do this with these men. Anyone who is bought by you, I don't care. He had to buy Eleazar. This is why he said Eleazar got married to one of the women, had children. Are you here today? And so all of those were, Abraham made them free. He didn't make them slaves. Anybody who came to join Abraham, amen, he, he paid for them. He bought them out of slavery. So they became Hebrews, amen. They became a part of the nation of Israel, amen. Still didn't have his babies or anything, amen. But God adopted them. God said, okay, they are yours now. They're part of your people, amen. You have to sacrifice their men and their children. This is a covenant between me and you. So Hagar, amen, who was a slave from Egypt, amen, becomes, amen, a part of the nation of Israel. Are you here? Because of the promise, they accepted her. They have blessed her. They put her in the people, amen. So God, she comes to be part of the people, amen. And God is not going to leave her alone. The Bible says this, amen. And then the angel of the Lord, amen. The angel of the Lord says to her. Well, excuse me, I'll read verse 7. Now the angel of the Lord found her by the spring water in the wilderness. And by the spring of the way, amen, of sure, amen, he had said to her, Hagar, Sire, as your maid. And he says, um, where have you come from? 
and where are you going? She says, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sari. And the angel of the Lord says to her, return to your mistress. Submit yourselves under her hand. Now there's two things that happen here. Because God knew. You can't just sweep something on the rug. God said, if they come back to you, treat her right. Because God knew that they were godly people that were going to do the right thing. They may not like Hagar at that moment. They may have thought a lot of things about Hagar. Hello. But godly people begin to contemplate if we did what's right before God. They start thinking, you know what, we made this choice, we got ourselves in it, and we just let her go. You don't think they stood there and said, well, Abraham, what, why, why did we go after her? Right. Hello? It's not an easy thing when you see somebody flee or running away. So what do you do? We, do, we pray. Yeah. And they sat there and started contemplating. Because God knew Abraham's heart. And if they were going to be one and be blessed, they're going to have to put up with Hagar. Are you here today? Regardless, you can't turn back a decision. You got to follow through that decision. You can't turn around and say, you know what? It's not going to Walmart, buying a shirt and taking it back. Are you here? That didn't fit me. Well, too bad. Put it on. Hello. Whatever you do, you must follow through those things. Amen. In today's Christian world, you don't have that. You have a bunch of people running away, going to other churches, and other churches making it easier. And it says, saying, go back. I tell people who try to come to our church, and man, take from another church, you need to go back there. Yeah. Yeah. Make it right. Yeah. Are you here today? Yeah. But all of a sudden, amen, he, you know, they, they get to the place, amen, when the angel says, go back, amen, because he already knew, amen, that Abraham, that they would accept her back. And when you say, accept something back, amen, you need to deal with those things. And so he encouraged her, amen, to go back because he understood that this man of God, amen, was a righteous man of God. And he's going to see his mistakes, amen. And he's going to tell his wife or they both are going to come together because they want to be righteous before God and say, we made a mistake. Sorry, let's move on. Right. Let me start teaching you right, Hagar. Let me try to teach you how to respect, amen, our God of Yahweh. Yep. You may want to go back to the world, but that's not going to happen. You're here. Now you're part of us. Right. How many can say amen? <laughs> and so they encourage her, amen, they encourage her because what? This shows us, amen, that he was prone to make mistakes in life. And God's seen it this way. God said, okay, you made a mistake. Now I got to deal with it. Now God sends an angel, go back home. And so what does she do? She goes back home. Can I get an amen? amen? And there, amen, because you have to deal with issues realistically. I mean, you make blunders. Make mistakes. You say the wrong thing. Just humble yourself. Sarah had to humble herself. I was wrong. Hello? Amen. I was wrong. How to teach her. How to teach her because every mistake comes with consequences and it affects not just you it affects especially like being out like everything affects both of us hello i don't care the smallest thing my wife worries about the guys at the home all the time so and so what about this person what about and she worries about me huh? because when things happen let's say it happened in the men's home pastor joe goes silent <laughs> Baby, are you okay? <laughs> Hello. The process of prayer, all these things. Bad relationships happen in our lives. What do you want to be? So God turns to her, amen, and tells her. And the angel says to her, return to your mistress and submit to her, amen. And then the angel of the Lord says to her, I have multiplied your descendants exceedingly. So that you should be uh, not be accounted for a multitude. And the angel of the Lord says to her, Behold, you are a child, amen, and you shall bear him a son, bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael. Now the name Ishmael, it means, amen, God hears. What did God hear? 
God hears her afflictions, her being mistreated, her pushed to the side. It didn't matter because God had called these two people, amen, with a calling in their lives, and they were doing the wrong thing. They made a mistake, amen. Now, they, they didn't want the mistake, amen. And God says, you have to live with it. Right. Now, you don't worry, I will take care of the rest. Can I get an amen? And this is exactly because why? They needed, amen. Let me tell you something. Abraham and Sarah need, amen, to alter their attitudes toward this young lady. Change your attitude. Amen. Work on it. Amen. How do you how do you do that? You go to God. God, how do we do this? What can we do? How can we fit men in this relationship? How can we get past? Amen. She's still of the world. She's Egyptian. She's all this. Instead of losing your patience with it, ask God how to teach us. When it comes to relationships, amen, this is exactly why. Because God called these two people. Can I get an amen? And they have to receive them back and go back. And as she goes back, they received her with gladness. Say amen. amen. Let me tell you something. Let me end with this. Amen. Our Christian lives, amen, they're gonna, we're going to make lots of mistakes. Amen. You're going to mistreat people. You don't want to. You just have people. Christians have bad days too. You know, most people look at Christianity like, you should be smiling. Why? Because you're a Christian. Is it supposed to be like that? Oh, hi. How are you doing? Hello. People have their wrong idea of Christianity. But the problem is, in our mistakes, amen, because why? We don't wait on God. One of the hardest things, amen, when we feel, when we feel, we never look at young souls. Are you here today? Yeah. We get impatient with you. Because you may be older, amen, 50, whatever, but you're still young in the Lord. Amen. And you still have to learn. Amen. And you still have to, sometimes you put your foot in your mouth. Yeah. Are you here? You can't look at the person's age. You have to look at their spiritual growth. Yeah, right. Your yeah. spiritual maturity. Amen. You can't just turn around and say, well, pastor said, no, you have to get in there and read. You have to understand the fruits of the Spirit. Ask yourself, do you have any of the fruits of the Spirit? Amen. If you have kindness, joy, peace, and happiness, are you content with what you have? And if you are content with what you have, that means that you're trusting God. Yeah. Are you here today? Don't get ahead of the Lord. Don't push aside God. Remain faithful to Him, and He'll be faithful to you. Let's bow our heads this morning, amen. I, don't want to, I want to encourage you this morning, amen. You may not think that God doesn't understand you, but he surely does. Amen. He understands what it takes to grow, just like Abram and Sarah. Like I said before, this has nothing to do, amen, with one person. It has to do, amen, with two people. Abraham and Sarah, amen. Abraham loved the Lord, amen. And no matter how many mistakes we make in life, no matter how many times we fall short, God will continue, amen, to make us. It delays the promise. It makes us wait longer. What we find, amen, is that Abraham had to wait 13 years because of his sin. God has forgiven us for our sins. He forgives us for our sins. When we treat people harshly, when we get upset, when we get mad, we must recognize these things. How we communicate. How's your attitude? This morning, I want to encourage you to hit this altar this morning. Ask the Lord to help you in your attitude. How we treat one another. God truly loves you and I. What God wants is spiritual adults. And we get messed up at times. Take things personal. So if you want to come up and pray this morning, just seek out the Lord and let God be the blesser of your life. Father, I pray for these, Lord God, who have come before you, Lord God. Lord, that you would bless us, Lord God. Lord, that you would help us, Lord God, in a time of struggles. Let your Holy Spirit would move amongst us this morning. Oh, Father, we praise you this morning, God.
Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. God bless. We'll see you.